Am I the asshole for not taking my brother's kids to Disneyland with me? Long backstory. My brother and I have had a strained relationship our whole lives. We come from a really abusive home. Our mum was amazing, but we were all horribly abused by our dad, and she couldn't or wouldn't leave. When I was 17, I moved out of state and had very little contact with anyone outside of my mum. My mum ended up being diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer and fought really hard for eight years. I would fly in to visit her every few months as I could. I ended up remarried to a really horrible and abusive man. He ended up having a heart attack and had to have a quad bypass. He was horrible to care for and just got more and more cruel. Three months after his heart attack, my mum's health turned for the worst and she passed. Our dad was horrible to us, going as far as to try to sue us for some money our mum left us. After the funeral, my husband got more and more abusive and I took the money she'd left me and I filed for divorce. I decided I needed some me time, so I decided to go spend some time at Disneyland and visiting family in the area. My brother told me I was stupid for getting a hotel and I should stay with him and his family. He has two girls, five and eight, that I have only met twice. When I get there, I was shocked that him and his wife were planning to go to work and leave the kids with me. I am not good with kids. I don't dislike them, I'm just uncomfortable with being responsible for them. The entire family knows this very well. I've been like that since I was a kid. I am happily child free, and I told him I wasn't there to be daycare for his kids. He got upset because he'd already told our aunt that she didn't need to watch them that week. I was irritated that he hadn't even asked me about this. I told him that I wasn't planning on being available to sit at his house watching his kids while they worked, and reminded him that I was planning to spend a few days at the park, which is a few hours away. I may be bad with kids, but I know better than to even mention Disneyland around them. Later that night, he tells me that it's stupid to pay for a hotel by the park. I should just drive up for the day, then I can take the girls. Without missing a beat, he asks them if they want to go spend the day with their aunt at Disneyland. Their response is what you would expect. I was floored. I told them that I had to go home and I couldn't go. I grabbed my stuff and drove up and found a hotel close to the park. I spent four days bouncing between parks, ordering room service, going to the pool, spa and bar, and a few times just drowned my sorrows alone in the hotel room. My phone blew up with family, who I haven't been close to in over a decade, telling me how awful I was and how much I'd upset the girls, my brother and his wife, that they were all grieving too and I was being selfish. So am I the asshole for not taking them with me? Your brother just neglects the fact that you had been abused horribly and your mother has died and that you're using this as time to get away and, you know, be away from people? Like this is going to be some you time and you really need this as I imagine you would need in a situation like this. And he's like, you know what? You're going to be staying here with us at our house and you're going to be looking after all of our kids. And as soon as you try to escape, I'm just going to tell the kids that you're going to take them to Disney World. And if you leave now, you're going to break their little hearts. <laughs> I'm not being abusive at all now, am I? Like what an asshole. What an absolute piece of human garbage for doing that to you, OP. I have absolutely no sympathy for him. I have all the sympathy in the world for the kids that have had their expectations crushed by him doing that to them. Intentionally. He knew what he was doing. Screw him. I'm glad you had a good time at Disneyland. Not the asshole. Now in the comments, Old Man Puzzles says, Who the hell, after experiencing an abusive home, sees their sister fleeing another abusive home and decides, Hey, free childcare. Absolutely not the asshole. Your brother is really heartless for treating you this way after so many recent traumatic events. Another abusive person. Considering he called OP stupid more than once, my bet is that he learned his behavior from their dad. Yeah, he's being very manipulative. He didn't mention childcare to OP beforehand on purpose. He asked his children about Disneyland in front of OP in a way that he thought she would be unable to say no. Then he told the rest of the family to turn them against her. OP is smart and strong to say no. 
Not the asshole. Your brother assuming you would babysit without asking, decide for you that a hotel is inappropriate and manipulating the situation to guilt you into taking his kids to Disneyland are all signs that your relationship with him is emotionally abusive. Given everything you've been through as a child and as an adult, I hope you've already found a good therapist. Block his number and those numbers from family who are critical and don't look back. And OP replies, I have spent a lot of time in therapy. The family uses it as proof that I have issues. He is the normal one who doesn't see a therapist. Our relationship was strained because as things got worse in our home as kids, he would find ways to throw me under the bus so that I was the focus of the anger instead of him. Once he was older, he would get into it with our dad and then leave, leaving me alone with him now that he was drunk and had been fighting with my brother. Our mum just avoided coming home at all costs. Oh, so he picked up your father's example to be an abuser. Block his number and enjoy your freedom. I'm so proud of you. Don't take this the wrong way, but you do understand that your mum failed you just as much as your father and brother, correct? I get that she might not have been able to leave, but it also doesn't sound like she did a lot to protect you either. Honestly, it's probably just best you limit contact with all remaining family. And OP replies, I don't take it wrong. That was a hard pill to swallow when I left home, but is why, as much as I loved her, I never went back, even when she was sick. I still loved her and had a relationship with her from afar, but I knew I could never depend on her. Well, now that you don't have to worry about her, you should consider your brother and your horrible ex as people you also no longer have to worry about, just in a different way. Our next post is by user Glowing Cash, titled, Am I the asshole for walking out of my husband's birthday dinner when his sister was complaining about her fertility? My husband's parents threw my husband a birthday dinner at their home last Saturday. During dinner, his sister announced that she was pregnant with her sixth child. Everyone congratulated her, and my husband grew quiet. He and I have been trying for a baby for seven years now, and only just saved the money for IVF. Once the commotion about the new member of the family settled, my sister-in-law started her usual commentary on how much it sucks to be so fertile, and how she feels like she'll just never be able to stop having kids because the pill and contraceptive injection both failed, and how she's not a good fit for an IUD. By the time she pointed out she's been pregnant so often that they don't even need to have full sex anymore for her to get knocked up, I couldn't and I walked out. My husband followed me and I could see he was holding back some tears too. He apologized for saying nothing. I said he didn't need to, that he was obviously struggling too. By the time we made it home, his parents had called to say how sorry they were and how none of that was meant to happen. His sister, on the other hand, called me a killjoy and a drama queen, and she told me that it was rude to walk out after all her parents' hard work and for spoiling the celebration of a pregnancy. I hung up on her, and I want to cry because her words stuck in my head. Since then, she and my husband got into a fight because she called me selfish and said I made the dinner about me instead of them. I wish I could feel like she's totally wrong, but I worry she's right. Am I the asshole? Now in the comments, Scorpio Girl 70 says, Not the asshole. Wait, you spoiled the celebration for the pregnancy? Funny, I could have sworn it was a celebration for your husband's birthday. Definitely not the asshole. She basically brought an FU to her brother instead of a gift. A double FU between stealing the limelight and bragging that her husband can get her knocked up easily. Why would she discuss their sex life with her family? This is gross. I for one would not like to hear about my brother's sex life with his wife or want to hear that from my son. She obviously upstaged her brother's birthday dinner. Not the asshole. she the sister-in-law, is the asshole. Well, it's because she actually knows how inappropriate her timing is and how her joy will inadvertently bring pain to her brother and sister-in-law and is trying to justify it to herself and everyone around her. It's not inadvertent. That's some conscious sadism going on. And notice her husband's parents understood perfectly why they left. I'm guessing everyone in the room knew that sister-in-law was the asshole here, not OP. Not the asshole. 
it was a birthday dinner for your husband. Not a me, 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 I'm pregnant again, it's all about me, me, me. I think she did it to ruin your dear husband's celebration and they should have said something to her. Not the asshole. And next time she says something, ignore the hell out of her. When my husband and I announced our pregnancy, we found out later that my sister-in-law was also pregnant with her second child and apparently had also planned to announce at the same dinner. After we told everyone, she decided to wait another week or two until we got together again. I thought that was incredibly classy and thoughtful of her. I probably wouldn't have minded, as it was actually pretty cool that the cousins ended up being born within a couple weeks of each other, but it was really nice to let us have our moment, especially since we only ended up having the one. And Substantial Fool says, Not the asshole. One, tell her husband to get a vasectomy. And two, I wish you guys the best with IVF. It's a very long, emotional process, and I wish you nothing but all the happiness in the world. And our next post is by user Left Them Out, titled, Am I the asshole for keeping my family out of my house in the rain because they sided with my ex-wife in the past? So my ex-wife Sasha and I didn't end amicably. It was a total nightmare. Up until it was actually finalized, she was in denial about us splitting and was doing everything to keep me in her life. When that didn't work, she went overboard. We were separated for seven months before I filed for divorce. Only a few people knew about our status, but she kept telling everyone we were still together and just trying to work it out. We weren't, but that was her lying. The divorce dragged on for a while, and around this time, I became friends with my current wife. It was almost like love at first sight. We really hit it off, and within three months after meeting, we started casually dating. Sasha found out and spread the lie that I'd been having an affair with my wife, and that's why I left her. Then made up another lie that she was pregnant, and I just left her and our unborn child for another woman. This was totally bullcrap, but my family ate it all up. They never even gave me the chance to say my side. Coincidentally, she miscarried from the stress of the divorce, and I was an even bigger monster to them. Then they went for my wife too, with calling her a homewrecker and many other horrible names. My wife was amazingly supportive through this, and I tried to keep her out of it as much as I could. But in the end, I cut my family out. For maybe three years, we haven't spoken. My wife and I just had a boy seven months ago. Now, I don't know how they did, but apparently my brother managed to catch my ex in her lies. The truth has been trickling out, and now they want contact. Except, I don't want contact after how they acted, and especially not the way they treated my wife. Without ever once believing me or giving me the chance to see my side, my mum, my sister, and my dad came to our place and begged to talk. I refused to open the door, so they were left outside. Coincidentally, it started to drizzle a little over here, but I still didn't let them inside. My brother believes I'm being an asshole leaving them outside the way I did when their goal was to apologize. And I guess my mum said she felt humiliated and crushed. I told him that's fine. I'm glad they finally saw the truth. In a way, I saw their truth in how ugly they can be. And even if they're remorseful now, my life has been happy and full without them. Now it's resorted into anger from him and my dad, thinking I'm being an immature asshole for not even giving them the chance to come into my home. It seems wild to me that they'd go to making me out to be the bad guy. I don't really know. Am I? That is some wild mental gymnastics from this family here that they're able to hocus pocus up some stupid nonsense in their heads that suddenly you're the bad guy again after they were shown that the mental cahoots from your ex were in fact cahoots and not truths. I can't imagine how you're feeling after all of that. I really pity what you're going through here and I wish never to go through it myself. And the fact that these people are angry that you're not letting them inside is just so stupid. They haven't earned the right to it. They've not genuinely been sorry. They haven't given you time to process your feelings. Leave them outside in the rain for all I care. Not the asshole OP. Now in the comments, Windriver7 says, Not the asshole. The real reason they're contacting you is that they want to see your son. Interesting that you heard nothing from them until your baby's birth. 
Your family could have approached by phone call, email, text, but they really want to see your baby, and that is why they tried visiting in person before offering apologies ahead of time. And OP replies, I've considered that the main reason too. I don't know how long ago they learned the truth. It was apparently recent. Well, that really lines up with their behavior. Don't be surprised if they try another approach. I would make sure that there are no flying monkeys that would share photos of your child with them. Yep, people can apologize, but that doesn't change what they did and the effect it had. I see this as OP protecting himself and his wife from people who have shown how awful they can be. Or, who they fundamentally are as people. They were awfully quick to turn against OP, and there's nothing to suggest that they wouldn't do it again. Example A, calling OP an asshole for not falling all over himself to forgive the people who betrayed him and then showed up on his doorstep, unannounced and without permission, expecting access to his home and family. Wow. Not the asshole. They locked you out in the storm of your divorce, when you could have used shelter with your family. I could keep going making parallels, but I feel like this is enough. I wish you kept going, to be honest. You mean like how they rained down lies on him and his wife? And Rainbow Bread says, I'm assuming they arrived here through their own transportation. They could have just left instead of hanging out in the rain. I'm gonna say not the asshole. They never should have gotten involved in your relationship drama in the first place. And it's hilariously ironic that they're mad at OP for not giving them a chance to apologize, when zero of them gave OP a chance to tell his side of the story all those years ago. I wouldn't be open to forgiving my family for their betrayal either, especially not with them behaving like this. This isn't remorse or contrition, this is entitlement. People who are actually sorry and understand how wrong they were don't behave like this. Them calling him an immature asshole for not immediately opening his home to them merely reiterates that they still do not grasp the extent of how screwed up their behavior was. Am I the asshole for calling the police on my dad when he stole the money that was meant for my child's birthday? I'm 22 female. I have a son who's going to be 4 next month. I'm low income, so birthdays and Christmas is something I need to save for year round, but I always make a fairly big deal out of them because I never had that as a young child due to my father's inability to spend money on anything that wasn't a necessity or alcohol. When I got my first job at 16, three quarters of my paycheck was taken by him to support his addiction. Now it may be worth a note that I kept this money in cash and in my house. My mum has a key to my house that I have told her not to give my dad access to, and she has a key because she minds my child three days a week while I work just to cut down on childcare costs. My mum knew about the fact I was saving, and I think she let it slip to my dad, but I'm really not sure. He somehow managed to get my mum's key and went into my house while I was working on Thursday. He had found and stolen the money saved for this year's Christmas and my son's birthday and taken it. I knew it was him because I have a security camera on both doors and in the spare bedroom where it was kept. They're all fairly obviously security cameras. I didn't bother to even check until Friday evening though, when I was going to gather some to get my son his present while he was at his dad's for the weekend. When I noticed all of it was gone, I checked the cameras and sure enough found out that it was my dad fairly quick. I didn't bother contacting my mum first, I just called the police and they came and took a statement off me and went to my parents' house to get one off my mum and dad. In the space of maybe 36 hours, my dad had managed to spend upwards of £250 on drink. I'd imagine in a pub where it's more expensive, but I'm not sure for certain. I went to the station Saturday morning to give in the CCTV footage when I was informed there was nothing they could do as the money seems to have disappeared into thin air. When I called my mom and told her this, she got really angry at me because having a theft charge could cost my dad his career and get them evicted from their accommodation and all this hullabaloo. She thinks I'm an asshole for calling the police before calling her and asking what happened. I don't think I am, but it's because my dad ruined a birthday and potentially a Christmas for my son. Am I the asshole? I think he deserves everything he gets in this situation, there is no coming back from that. He doesn't even offer an apology or try to tell you why he did what he did. 
this is just plain and simple, a, a theft, a robbery. There really isn't any reason you shouldn't report him. If you don't, that just shows he can get away with it and he'll just do it again if he's not stopped. It's unfortunate that your mom wants to protect him, but he doesn't deserve to be protected. He deserves to be punished for what he's done here. Not the asshole OP and actually go through with this one. Now in the comments, Tally Bob says, Not the asshole. Your father is a thief and deserves to be treated as such. You should probably take the key back from your mum too. OP should change the locks. Who knows if her father made a copy of the key. OP should go back to the police and find out if she can press trespassing charges against the father. He might have taken the key from the mother, but he still committed unauthorised entry into her home. OP should also stop allowing her mother to provide childcare and go no contact with both parents. Can't they proceed with the theft charges even though he spent the stolen money? Not the asshole, OP. Don't negotiate, don't waver. Pursue it to the maximum you're allowed. Then file a civil suit to get a court order for him to pay you back over time. You and your son now have to suffer for no reason. Your dad at least ought to be made to suffer as a direct consequence of his own actions. Wow, not a good justice system. Spend the money before they come at you and you get a pass? Can't be that easy, can it? It's nice to see the police treating people the way the Justice Department treated investment banks. And Little Bopper 2015 says, Not the asshole. Your mum is obviously not capable of dealing with him, and she's just mad he got in trouble, but really, she's an enabler of his crap behaviour. Your father is toxic, and he steals from his children. And steals from his grandchildren. He stole money that was for his own grandchild's birthday and Christmas presents. Not the asshole. And our next post is by user Kalinium, titled, Am I the asshole for not telling my older sister-in-law my son's name before he's born? So my husband has two sisters. Jane is older and Emma is younger. He and I are expecting our second baby and we already have his name decided. Jane knows this because she saw my husband pick up the custom name sticker that we got for the nursery. Jane is dying to know the name. She asked my husband, and he told her that we'd reveal all when the baby is here. She came to me then and asked me, and I said no to giving her the name. The reason? When Emma had her son, she used the name Emma had mentioned when she was six months pregnant. Jane was also pregnant, a couple months ahead of Emma, and when Jane's son was born, she used the name Emma had chosen. Same first in middle, and also last. Emma ended up changing her son's name, and it really upset her. When my husband and I had our daughter, Jane went nuts over her name. She told us we had amazing taste, and joked that she wished she had a girl to use it on. My husband told her that wouldn't work anymore since we already had a child with the name. She rolled her eyes at his response. Jane's due any day now with another baby, and I suspect she would use our son's name if we told her now. She thinks I'm being too uptight and should share the name since it's not a big deal and can give her the chance to get something extra special for our son. I told her she doesn't need to get him anything, but anything she does want to buy can be purchased when he's here. She's really mad. Am I the asshole? I think there's really no reason to tell her the name of the baby in this situation. She's obviously already done that to another family member, and there is a possibility she's going to steal yours. You shouldn't enable her crappy behavior, her stupid thieving of names. I see no reason to continue that charade. I'm going to say not the asshole and just hold your tongue. Now in the comments, Reddit Gunboat says... Not the asshole. Also troll her and tell her a false name. Okay, okay, but keep it a secret. Aloysius Bertrand Smith. <laughs> this is the way. Not the asshole. The fact she stole her sister's child name is wild. I would not tell her either. It sounds like she may be digging for another name to steal. And OP replies, that is my theory especially given her reaction to my daughter's name and her using the name her sister had chosen. Not the asshole. You need to update when you tell her a fake name. Let her steal it, and when she finds out your son has a way better name in the future, how mad she gets at you. She's fishing for your son's name. 
Keep that door closed. Accidentally say it when he's kicking you. Ouch, Thomas Gray, that hurts. Then look around as if making sure no one heard you say it. Side note, I really like that name. I think I'm gonna steal it. Our next post is by user engagementx1234, titled, Am I the asshole for kicking my brother out of my engagement party for what he said about my fiance? I, male 31, met my now fiance at the clinic I work in. I'm a dentist. She works a lower paying job at the clinic. She's the sweetest, nicest, most beautiful woman I've ever met. She's smart, humble, and has a beautiful smile. It was a love at first sight for me, and I was lucky that she felt the same way about me. I introduced her to my family after eight months of dating, and she wanted to wait because of fear that my family wouldn't accept her. My sister became her best friend instantly. My mom admired her personality and became friends with her mom, but my dad and brother kept their distance and made some pretty hurtful comments about how incompatible my fiancé and I were, and how I should keep it moving and look for someone with a better background. They never said anything in front of her, though. I ignored them completely and tried to protect my fiancé from their snide comments, but because mum and others wanted us to visit then, we didn't have much choice. Last week, we had our engagement party at the restaurant. I didn't want my dad or my brother there, but my mum told me to let my dad and brother come since my fiancé would notice that I didn't invite them and ask questions about it. I decided to invite them after my mum promised they remain civil and respectful. My family arrived today. My dad remained quiet, then started talking with other guests, so things were going pretty well. When dinner arrived, my brother sat with us at the table asking how much money I lost to make this dinner happen, then how much my fiancé contributed at all. My fiancé and I were talking about her engagement ring, and my brother randomly started singing, Now I ain't saying she a gold digger. My fiancé and her mum stared at him and he stopped. I gave him a look, warning for him to knock it off. Then I got up from my seat to make a toast, and my brother interrupted me loudly, coughing, <coughs> Preen up! Preen up! And everyone heard him and stared awkwardly. I was livid, and I put my drink down and asked to see him outside. I had an argument with him and I told him to leave. He acted dumb about how he behaved and mum got involved. I demanded he leave and he did after calling me nuts and my mum and dad said I shouldn't have kicked him out. Dad left shortly after, which made my mum say that I caused a scene and ruined my own dinner by kicking my brother out. My fiancé was hurt by that, but mum said my brother cried because I kicked him out and wants us to meet and talk. My brother is older than me. He's 37 and divorced. Now in the comments, Lily INTX says, Not the asshole. How dare they disrespect your fiancé? That is crossing the line. I do believe your dad and brother must talk about their dislike for her a lot if they had the balls to embarrass you and her at your own party. He deserved to get kicked out and you shouldn't feel bad about it at all. Nor would I even worry about meeting up with them. They didn't disrespect just his fiance. they disrespected her entire side of the family. Completely unacceptable. Good on OP for not glossing it over, or she'd never have known if she could trust him to be her partner. Not the asshole. He cried? Good. He's acting like a child and thinks crying will get him everything he wants. He wants to call your fiance a gold digger while ignoring the fact he's acting like a spoiled, snobby little rich kid. And OP replies... Mum told me that. I believe her because he tends to use emotions to get others to side with him. It's a tactic that he uses all the time, and I, as his younger brother, am expected to respect him. The tactic he's using is called DAVO, Deny, Attack, and Reverse Victim and Offender. He uses it as a way to manipulate others, like your mum, dad, you, to do what he wants all the time while not accepting responsibility for his actions. It's nothing more than a ploy. You may want to research it to find out what you're dealing with and how to deal with it. I'm so sorry you and your fiancé got hurt during this. You deserve better. Blessed be. And Mighty Thorgasm says, Quote, my brother is older than me. He's 37 and divorced. Divorced? You don't say. Couldn't for the life of me figure out why. A real gosh darn mystery. 
not the asshole. Our next post is by user throwaway eight seven two o two one, titled "Am I the asshole for defending my daughter's religious choices?" I understand religion can be a touchy subject sometimes, so I'll try to tread carefully. My daughter Jessica, 22, female, dropped the bombshell that she was going to be an atheist and did not wish to attend church services anymore unless necessary, weddings, funerals, etc. As her mother, I was initially shocked and rather hurt because I raised her as a Catholic, but we had lengthy discussions and worked through the adjustment together. Since then, Jessica has been happy with the new arrangement, as am I. After finishing a quarter of summer school and with more free time on her hands, Jessica decided to drive up to visit her grandparents and planned to stay there for the rest of the summer before the school year started again. But not even one week into her stay, Jessica drove home upset. She told me that when her grandparents were prepping for church, as they always do every Saturday, Jessica mentioned that she was now an atheist and did not want to attend church anymore, and would wait for them to get home before resuming activities together. But her grandmother blew up upon hearing the news and started saying hurtful comments, like how Jessica would be punished by him and how she was being manipulated by evil spirits, to say the least. The two apparently quarrelled for a good half hour or so before Jessica decided to leave. According to my daughter, she tried to have a thoughtful conversation, but said her grandmother was too stubborn and unwilling to listen, despite grandfather's attempts to calm the situation. She still forced Jessica to go to church, and that was when Jessica decided to leave. After tending to Jessica's needs, I called my mother up, and she told me I was a terrible parent for raising a soulless child. I argued back, saying that Jessica is an adult and was entitled to her own beliefs and lack thereof, as were we. I questioned my mother if she loved her grandchild any less now that she did not believe in the same higher power. My mother deflected and kept repeating that Jessica was a sinner and she would go to hell if I didn't fix her behavior. Getting nowhere, and in the spur of the moment, I impulsively ended the call by saying, "You know what?" I'd rather burn for all eternity if grandparents like you were in heaven. Now I'm very torn because I let my emotions get the better of me and may have ruined my relationship with my mother over my reckless, curt response. However, I also wasn't willing to let her talk about my daughter this way either. Am I the asshole? Now in the comments, blocked by Jack says, "Not the asshole. You rightfully defended your daughter. That's the end of it for me." It doesn't matter whether this was about religion or identity or a dietary choice. If it's hurting no one else, then leave her be. Faith is a personal thing. No amount of churching is going to make you believe if you don't, and no amount of debating is going to make you not believe if you do. The key thing is to mind your business and move on. I think the thing is the grandmother probably believes Jessica is hurting herself. In this case, her soul by being atheist, so she can pray for her. Well, I think this actually brings up another good point, though, that people like these grandparents seem to forget. Having faith is a choice that individuals must make due to the sheer nature of free will. Forcing or guilting someone into making that choice isn't the same as them having their own conviction of faith and believing in those things of their own free will. That's why even Jesus makes a big deal out of religion being a deeply personal relationship that is only between the believer and God. You can't force that relationship on someone else. That's literally not how any of this works at all. And by doing that, you're taking away their free will. Big no-no, since that was kind of the main factor in the whole concept of faith as a whole. Faith itself is believing in something despite having no evidence or facts to back it up, and if you don't have that, pretending to have it for the comfort of others isn't going to magically give someone a free pass into heaven. You're also passing judgment on others, which is super not any man's place. God is pretty flip and clear that he doesn't like when people do his job for him, multiple times. As a man on earth abiding by the teachings of Christ, a true believer's only real job is to love their neighbors unconditionally, thus showing non-believers that faith can bring community, love, and support, regardless of who you are or where you come from. That's the whole point. Being mean to people who you don't share your beliefs with is completely counterproductive to that goal. 
Also, just to clarify, I'm an atheist myself, but I was raised in the church, so it's not like I'm pulling this out of my ass. I'm pulling it out of the Bible. And our next post is by user Am I the asshole throw away baby boyfriend? Titled Am I the asshole for telling my sister to get screwed when she complained about my kids waking her up at night? I had triplets four months ago and last week wound up moving back in with my parents for health and safety reasons. My hubs is working overtime to try and move us out. We have a two and three year old as well. Sadly, we lost one baby. So currently two toddlers and two infants. I'm pretty tired and my kids are all disgruntled. Toddlers miss their dad, miss their things, and are honestly just overtired. The babies are both screamers. We get very little done and absolutely no help from anyone, and I don't expect it, but my parents won't even watch them for 10 minutes so I can shower. My sister is 22 and still living at home. She's an influencer and as such needs her beauty sleep. We've already had several issues, mainly with her wanting to post my kids on her socials, especially the babies. I think she's trying to gain popularity through the son my husband and I lost. Anyway, as children do, my kids cry. A lot. All four of them. One goes and all four are screaming. This happens a lot at night when one of the babies wakes up due to hunger. All four kids are breastfeeding, so when one is eating, they all want food. I only have two boobs. Obviously babies come first, so most nights we'll head down to the kitchen and I'll get the older two bottles instead. I'm not sure if it's us going downstairs or them waking up crying, but my sister is always woken up. She's not a fan, which I get, as being woken up isn't fun. Yesterday, she went on a huge rant about my kids waking her up all the time, telling me I needed to discipline them more, etc., claiming I'm a bad mum because I let them wake up during the night. I was overtired and pissy. I turned around and called her a self-centered tramp, and until she was grieving a child while desperately trying to keep four others happy, she could get screwed. She started crying, saying I didn't need to be so harsh, she's just tired, etc. I more or less flipped her off. It felt like she was trying to guilt trip me, honestly. We are all tired, and it doesn't mean she gets to be a tramp about it. Since then, she seems to be trying to make my life hell. She's under the guise that if she keeps my kids awake during the day, they'll sleep through the night, which is not how it works. Our parents are fully on her side, going on about how none of the kids work up during the night, and how it's clearly my soft parenting that's doing this to them. My husband is trying his best to be supportive, but has more or less just suggested that I try my best to keep them quiet. My sister still hasn't let go of the insult, and my parents are also badgering me about it. And I still haven't apologized because she hasn't apologized for insulting me, calling me petty. My husband does think I should apologize for that, and I'm kind of in limbo regarding it. So I come to you. Am I the asshole for insulting her and letting my kids wake her up? And to edit to add, just adding a few things people are saying I should. I am paying rent, $200 a week, and if I want to use the spare bedroom so my toddlers and babies can sleep separate, rent will double. My sister is not paying rent. We were evacuated because our neighbor had dangerous substances in his house. With two immune-compromised NICU babies, we couldn't stay as it could very easily kill them and our two girls. She was telling my daughter to act upset for photos and asking crazy questions about my son who passed, as well as asking if we had any photos of him or things of his, as well as the fact that she posted several photos of my children that I had her delete after I told her repeatedly that I don't want them on the internet. It all starts adding up. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I think I'm the asshole because I do seriously understand her frustrations and it really shouldn't be too hard for me to apologize. Now in the comments, Like I Stole Your Bike says, Everyone sucks here. You are living at home with your parents and presumably where your sister lives full time? You've disrupted their lives and should probably do your best to keep the peace. Sister and parents need to be more tolerant. Babies cry and children cry. But what exactly is she supposed to do? Spray the babies with a squirt bottle when they cry? 
No one can truly pretend that they didn't foresee this possibility when OP moved back home. And given that OP is dealing with the death of a kid who was probably not even a year old, her sister and her parents can keep their mouths shut. I mean, not continuing to have more kids when they can barely handle the ones they have would be a good start. I don't blame them for the kids they've had so far, because I don't know the situation they're in. But if they have any more, they will be the asshole. They need to go on birth control, stat. They were going for a third kid, and it sounds like three would have been perfectly doable, but ended up with surprise triplets and soon a freaking death. How about we cut OP some slack? There's nothing indicating that they plan to have more kids. Bored again, 0410 says, everyone sucks here. Two and three year olds should not be waking up in the middle of the night to eat or on bottles. Waking up is part of having kids, but the sister or parents aren't the ones who decided to have babies. Her wanting to post them on SM and asking to punish the newborns makes her an asshole too though. But it's perfectly normal for breastfed toddlers to wake up in the night. Not all children sleep through the night. Saying otherwise sets parents up for unrealistic expectations. I never said they should be sleeping through the night. I said that two and three year olds should not need to eat to go back to sleep and they shouldn't be on bottles still. And edit to add, OP said all the sudden changes caused some regressions, which I get. A mini fridge would seem like an easier solution to curb some of the crying though. And Kit Tay Tay 2021 says, geez, I literally can't understand why everyone's saying OP sucks or everyone sucks here. She lost a baby. She has four babies and no one is helping her. Not her parents, not her spoiled ass sister, and her hardworking husband can't. She had to leave her home because of some freaking crap her neighbor was pulling, so she was forced to live in this situation. It's not like she wanted to move in with her parents. The poor thing hasn't even had time to grieve her baby, and her parents and sister just plain suck at offering up any kind of support. Geez, OP. If you lived close to me, I'd put you up. Not the asshole. And P.S. I'm so sorry for the loss of your baby, and I hope you get some peace soon. And OP replies, We're really hoping to find somewhere to move soon. Hubs gets his big paycheck next week, and we're hoping it'll be enough for a deposit on some place. Thank you. I just want to chime in and say that I feel really sorry for you, OP. I don't know if you will ever see this, but I feel that your family are being giant asshats. You have had an unbelievably hard few months and have faced something which is every parent's nightmare. People need to cut you some slack. You were doing your best in a horrendous situation. Keep your chin up and you'll get through this and know that a stranger is sending you love and support. You are amazing. Your babies are amazing. Your husband is amazing. I hope you get back to your home soon so that you have some time to grieve and heal. And OP replies, thank you. Am I the asshole for expecting my daughter to pay me and my wife back for her Uber? So my daughter, 16 years old, went out with her friends last week, and some people my daughter doesn't like showed up. My daughter called my wife and said that she was uncomfortable, and asked my wife to pick her up. My wife was in an appointment and I was at work, so my wife called her an Uber. Every time my wife or I call her an Uber, she's had to pay us back, so when my daughter got home, I asked her for the money. She asked what I was talking about, and said that my wife said that she didn't have to pay us back. I asked my wife why she told our daughter she didn't have to pay us back, and she was surprised that I asked. She said she wasn't going to charge our daughter for getting out of a situation where she was uncomfortable. We got into an argument about it because Uber isn't cheap, and I don't think my daughter not wanting to be around certain people justifies us having to pay for her Uber. She took our daughter out to eat and won't talk to me, so I wanted to know if I was the asshole. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I think I might be the asshole because my wife and I are fighting about this and she won't talk to me. That's the reason why you think you're the asshole? Because your wife and you are fighting about this and she won't talk to you. You don't think your actions in this story are the reason that you're an asshole for this. Alright. Alright, man. 
You seem to have a lot of common sense, it would seem. So just the fact that your wife and I are fighting are like, hmm, maybe I am an asshole, but let's not think deeper than that. Just gonna go with you're the asshole. Now in the comments, Moongirl12 says, You're the asshole. So much. Your daughter trusts you enough to get her out of a situation where she's uncomfortable, responsible enough to ask, and you want to charge her for it. Why? Why would you essentially penalize your daughter for being open with you? Seriously, you're the asshole. Imagine the next time that she's feeling uncomfortable, and suddenly she remembers that she can't come to you anymore. What kind of situation will she find herself in then? Plus, your wife wanted to come pick her up, but she was unable to do so. So it's not just your daughter wanting the ride. Your wife also wanted to get the ride for her. I imagine your wife wouldn't charge her if she wasn't in an appointment and had been able to go get her. I cannot agree enough. I'd much prefer my daughter to be safe. As adults, we know how things can escalate. What if she was assaulted because she was worried about calling for someone to get her and Ubers are expensive, quote unquote. The OP is more or less saying stay in danger because he's a Scrooge and that is definitely you're the asshole behavior if I ever heard it. Or maybe the OP thinks she should walk the streets home alone and vulnerable just to save money. I really do hope this thread is a wake up call for him and I'm very glad her mom is on the ball. Yep. I'm a survivor of sexual assault. If I felt comfortable enough to call my parents to pick me up after I'd been drinking, I would have. I was afraid of getting in trouble, so I stayed at a party and was assaulted that night. Oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Parents in my day were too trapped up in morality to be tuned into the real danger in the world. I was shocked the OP considered this behavior to be acceptable. If his daughter didn't feel comfortable, he should have moved heaven and earth to get her out of trouble. I'm seriously worried what she'll do in the future with a dad like this. She could easily end up in the same situation that you faced. I hope her mom stands firm and makes sure she knows she can call for help whenever she needs it. And Lady Tanizaki says, You're the asshole. Your desire to charge your daughter for making good choices is wrong-headed at best. You should want to encourage her to remove herself from situations that feel risky or make her uncomfortable. Charging her for it is going to discourage her from reaching out for help. Young women learn to be sensitive to people who are threatening or creepy. You know, people who go on to assault others. Her not liking these people could be because, oh, I don't know, they are hostile, dangerous, or bullying. Your daughter obviously has learned how to draw boundaries. Getting her out of there and ensuring that she's safe and reinforcing the idea that you will always help her stay safe is way more important than the cost of an Uber. Our next post is by user Brother Favorite, titled, Am I the asshole for telling my parents they're not meant to make it obvious who their favorite child is? I'm 16 female. I have a 20 month old younger brother. We'll call him Jack who is pretty much the light of my parents' life. I understood that when he came along, I wouldn't have my parents' undivided attention, or even much of it in the first few years of his life, but I didn't really understand how much would really change. It started when he was about six months old. They asked me if I would take the smaller bedroom and move Jack into mine. They have pretty valid reasons, so I did agree and took the smaller room. My room was fairly bare when it was the bigger one. It was just my bed, a bit of decoration, wardrobe, dresser, and in that room, my TV was wall-mounted. But my dad kept forgetting to wall-mount it in the new room, so it was on the dresser. I do prefer the smaller room, as it's easier to keep clean, and it's cozier. The room was kind of just the start of the whole, your brother needs more, think. It was just kind of giving my brother snacks that I kept in the fridge or hot press for a while. Then it turned into, can we give your brother insert thing that I use regularly? Most recently, it was my TV and Chromecast. This is what kind of takes the cake for me. My brother slept in my parents' room for the first six months and got used to falling asleep with the TV on. Then until about a month ago, it was his iPad propped on his dresser. He ended up breaking his iPad because he's one. He shouldn't even have one. My parents decided they were going to take my TV to make my brother sleep, so they did. 
Only it's not a smart TV, and I used it mainly for my Switch, PlayStation, and had a Chromecast to watch things with. So they decided to take the Chromecast too. I got pretty pissed about this. They didn't even ask this time. And when I brought it up, they said I'm saving for a new one anyways. And look, I am saving for a smaller one, but I'm a bit off still, so I'd only need to wait another few months. I asked them how they expect my brother to sleep in, I don't know, say a hotel or at a sleepover, if they don't break the habit now. They say they don't know, but they'll cross that bridge when they come to it. I eventually asked what I meant to use my PlayStation on, and they said that I can just wait until I get myself a new one. I asked about the Chromecast, same thing. I'll have to get myself a new one. No compensation. Eventually I got annoyed and said, you know, you're allowed to have favourites, but you're not meant to make it obvious who it is. They both got pretty pissed at me for implying they have a favourite child to begin with. They think I'm a huge asshole for that alone and saying I want my TV back. Am I the asshole? Yeah, I just disagree with their parenting habits though and their backlash for that when you've outlined that this is a terrible habit to let the kid fall into and that this is shoddy parenting at best. Just goes to show that they truly don't care and they really couldn't care less about you at this point. It doesn't matter how many things they can deprive you of as long as it makes parenting their golden child easier, they will do it. I imagine you're praying for the day you turn 18 so you can just get the hell out of there, but that's not so easy in this day and age, and it kind of sucks that they're being like this. I disagree with these parents' actions and what they've brought to the table in this, so I'm going to say not the asshole OP. Now in the comments, Lizzie says, not the asshole. And letting a baby get into the habit of falling asleep with the TV on sounds like a really bad idea. It's a terrible habit for adults. I can't imagine it's at all good for babies. Also, their argument about the larger room is bogus. Babies need less space than adults. When OP moves out for school in a few years, I would understand then, as they wouldn't be living at home full time. But not before then. I have no idea what reasons they presented to OP. But yeah, I've never heard of the baby getting the largest room. They don't need much. Maybe it was just the closer room to them and happened to be the largest room? Only thing I could see to make sense. Paper Wings 451 says, Not the asshole. What teen has to buy their own TV anyway? And it sounds like your parents don't want to raise your baby brother. They just want to sit him in front of a screen so they don't have to deal with him. Yeesh. I smell an iPad kid being raised. Those kids are pretty much auto view generators for YouTube. That's how Baby Shark got 9 billion views. Well, the good thing is that you cannot monetize a channel if your channel is focused on kids. So those channels that repeat the same chapters of kids shows or kids animation with hundreds of ads in the videos aren't earning money on it. Not the asshole. The kid is 20 months old. He can't tell the difference between a TV show and a screen filled with static. He doesn't need an iPad. They should just get one of those small kitchen TVs with aerials and turn it to a channel that works. I agree with the judgement, but 20 months old is absolutely old enough to tell the difference between a TV show and static. There are plenty of Cocomelon addicted 1-2 to two year olds who just watch it for hours a day. My 20 month old screamed at me yesterday because I tried to put on a show that wasn't Cocomelon. I absolutely loathe Cocomelon. I wish JJ et al. Nothing but pain. Yeah, my 20 month old is in love with Howl's Moving Castle and Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. She does not like Ponyo or other animations nearly as much. She can absolutely tell the difference and has been able to since I think 8 months old. My vote is not the asshole. OP's parents are going too far. Crossing boundaries with OP and invalidating their concerns. Our next post is by user throw342332, titled, Am I the asshole for not taking my husband to the hospital after he lied to me? So me and my husband have been married for four months. I returned to work right after we got back from our honeymoon. My husband thinks I went too soon and wanted to extend our honeymoon or plan a summer trip for us. But since we have to pay rent, electricity and internet, we needed to earn a living. 
I work at a restaurant right across the street. My husband would call me during work hours and complain about missing me and feeling bored. I get home by 6 p.m., so I understand how he feels since he can't start working till September. He called me one time from work asking if I could come home to watch a movie together, but I said I was busy. He complained and then ended the call, but then called me back 30 minutes later, telling me to get home ASAP because he injured his arm and couldn't move it. I freaked out and went home quickly to find it was actually a lie to get me to skip work so I could watch the movie with him. It pissed me off. He did it again days later, saying his car broke down and I needed to come pick him up. Then I found out he lied to get me out of work so he could take me out for lunch. I spoke to him about it and told him to stop doing it and he apologized and said he won't repeat those shameful acts. Five days ago, he called me while I was working to tell me to come take him to the hospital because he fell from the stairs and injured his ankle. I hung up on him thinking he was lying. He texted me but I ignored him since I had a ton of work. 20 minutes later, his brother called and was mad, saying he just took my husband to the hospital for his broken ankle and I should have responded to my husband's calls and texts. I went to the hospital and my husband was very upset. I tried to explain that I thought he was joking, but he said, save it, I don't want to hear about how you thought I was a liar. Then went on about how hurt he was that I didn't help him in a time of need and vulnerability. He told me to go back to work since it was so important and since I didn't want to leave it to help him out. He started a big argument over this and I told him due to his previous lies, how was I supposed to believe him now? He said he didn't even need to tell me and I should have known something was wrong. It's been days and he's still upset and asked his sister-in-law to stay to help him out. I felt horrible and like a not supportive wife at all. Okay, someone told me that I should add this piece of information for context, and here it is. My husband suffered from mental health issues in the past year or so, hence he can't work till September. He's doing a lot better now compared to what he dealt with in the past, but still suffers from a number of symptoms, one of them being anxiety. He doesn't know anyone in the town we live in, just his brother that he sees once or twice a week. He says that he hates staying home by himself and wishes he could have me stay all the time. This is just one of those situations that you just read and it just gets worse and I wonder if he broke his leg in order to do this to her. I genuinely wonder if he went so far as to break his leg so that he could get more attention from his wife. That's, that's the level that I feel some people are at. That is just next level emotional manipulation. I just, I couldn't stay with someone that did that to me, OP. And I know it might be hard, but it's like, my recommendation is leave. And I think you're not the asshole for this one. I think you're stuck with a ridiculous manipulator. Get out of there. Not the asshole. Now in the comments, Antisocial Kitty says, not the asshole. Right now you're in the shallow end of the abuse pool. You're newlyweds. If this is his starting point, playing Cassandra here, the end looks like you both homeless and you prostituting yourself out for his drugs or similar vice. He isn't going to change. You can't fix him. How much abuse are you willing to take? You need to seriously think about this. Find your line. Do it before he pushes the line too far. Your grasp on reasonable is going to slip further. It is already being compromised. Draw your own line, and then hold the line come hell or high water. Good luck. Right? He sounds like the kind of person who can't stand anything to be more important than him. He'll likely only get more angry as she continues to try and have a life outside of him, and his behavior will escalate. How depends on what kind of person he is. He doesn't have to get violent to be abusive. Watch him, OP. This sounds like a huge red flag to me, and there may be more you just haven't recognized yet. I'm not going to scream to jump ship, but definitely watch him. I'm not a psychologist, and by no means am I an expert, but having had exposure to family members who are narcissists, I'm getting concerned the OP's husband might be one too. Regardless, I'm getting serious red flags for abuse. OP should get out now, before he gets worse. Not the asshole. Dump his lying ass. This pattern will destroy your current job. 
He's making you unreliable. She's at high risk of being terminated from her position. Not to mention the sister-in-law is there now, and she has to feed a whole extra person while her husband whines all day? Not the asshole, and I'd get an annulment. I lost a job due to my ex-husband causing me to miss work. He got drunk and flipped a four-wheeler, causing him to get a driving while under influence charge, and also suffered several injuries. My grandparents who lived next door were keeping an eye on him. He somehow managed to get a bottle of Everclear, and they called me to take him back to the ER because we thought that he was suffering from a head injury. Additionally, several years ago, my husband was chainsawing cedar out on the ranch. He joked several times that he'd cut off a limb when he called me. Therefore, when he called me to tell me that he'd injured himself with the chainsaw and we needed to go to the ER, I didn't believe him. He ended up needing over 60 stitches in his leg. He never, ever, ever pulled anything like that ever again. Our next post is by user Forests111, titled, Am I the asshole for making my stepson choose between therapy or living with his dad after what he's done? My stepson, Aaron, 17, has always been a jokester. First, his jokes were funny, but he then started using other identities to start drama in family and friends. For example, he once texted his cousin's phone with a floaty text, and his cousin's girlfriend saw it, and it got messy. He texted his uncle pretending to be his son's friend, and lied about his son being in an accident. It was awful, and I tried doing something about it, but everyone would say he's adapting. It's normal teenage behavior, he'll grow out of it. Even blamed his dad, saying he's a jokester himself, so it's a trait in his DNA. I tried to get an explanation out of him, and he'd say stuff like, Dude, like, it's kind of fun. Which made no sense. My final straw was days ago when I was at work and I received a text via my pregnant wife's phone, telling me that her water broke and told me to meet her at XXX Hospital. I drove for one and a half hours and called her family and we went there. We were shocked to know my wife never came to the hospital. I called her phone and then went home. When I got there, I found out my wife was actually napping like she does usually, and Aaron coming downstairs laughing at my face and my in-laws' faces. I yelled at him when he said he got me fooled by taking my wife's phone and texting me about her going into labor. He asked, Oh my god, did you really drive to the frickin' hospital? My wife said nothing, and I decided that I had it. I told him I was sick of his games, and he's got two options. Therapy to fix his issues, or no longer living in my house. He complained about it being his dad's idea, but it was obvious blame shifting. He went upstairs, calling me names. My wife tried to calm me down, but my blood pressure, as I have a chronic disease, was up, and I was shaking. My in-laws said I was too harsh and went too far with my ultimatum. I decided to back down because I think I won't be able to take it more. I apparently made them more upset than what Aaron did and said I have to forgive him and drop it, but I couldn't. The thing is, Aaron is 100% against therapy and has a pretty bad idea of it. He associates it to his parents divorcing and is making it his hill to die on and says no one will force him to get therapy since he thinks it's a waste of time trying to change his personality. And about his bio dad, I've discussed this behavior with him and his response that I was being too bossy and controlling. His opinion about therapy was that I'm attempting to brainwash and change Aaron's personality and control what he says and how he behaves to get him on my side, especially since Aaron doesn't see me as a father figure to him. Of course, none of his claims are true. He even told me to my face that Aaron can do whatever he wants, whenever he pleases, and it's none of my concern but was trying to keep communications open, otherwise I'd be accused of enforcing my own thoughts and decisions without Aaron's dad's input. Now in the comments, The Final Frontier says, Not the asshole. Your stepson is 17, not 7, and if he doesn't know the difference between right and wrong at this age, you are well within your rights to not want to associate with him. Honestly, Given the lack of parenting from his mother, I would be questioning my decision to have children with a woman who will not help or discipline her son. Too late now though, she's already pregnant. 
And I question OP's judgement in ever having children with someone who managed to raise this child. OP, not the asshole. this soon-to-be adult will get himself arrested for the stupid crap that he's pulling. Your ultimatum is sound and fair. And edit to add, his behaviour might be stemming from jealousy of the baby, given how immature he is, this is very likely. Plus the obvious problem of bio dad using son to stir up crap, and wife and in-laws afraid to lose contact. Not the asshole. It seems though, that what you've got is an in-law problem. Aaron is never going to change when all the adults around him justify his behaviour. This one should have been the last straw for everyone, and yet they acted like it was just a funny joke. You upended your entire day, drove one and a half hours one way, missed work, and instead of an apology, you were laughed at and berated. Yet here you are, being told you're wrong for not immediately bowing to his joke. Stay steadfast in your decision here. And if you're ostracized, maybe it's time to take a break and co-parent to a new child away from this environment. This. Maybe in-laws and mum will realize it's a problem when he starts making newborn pranks on parents who haven't slept for two months. Right? Hopefully mum won't think it's funny when her 17-year-old screams in the middle of the night, <gasps> The baby's not breathing! Oof. Here I was worrying about benign things like hiding a baby or going boo right when he falls asleep after 40 minutes of rocking. Nah, seems like this kid is looking for the oh crap and crushing moments. Going boo after a rocking session isn't scary enough for him. He might hide the baby though. Am I the asshole for selling my vacation apartment to one daughter even though my other daughter asked for it? Hello lovely people of Reddit. For some context, I'm a 78-year-old woman living alone. I own a house that I live in, and my children grew up in, and a beachfront apartment. This is where our family vacationed often when the children were growing up. I have two daughters that I'll call Violet, the eldest, and Rose, the youngest, in this story. Health issues have led me to be unable to maintain the apartment, so I was looking to sell. I mentioned this briefly to Violet last year, during the stage where I was only considering selling, and she said when I was ready, she would buy it. I said that would be lovely, and the conversation ended. When I decided to officially sell three months ago, I told both Violet and Rose, and to my surprise, Rose also immediately offered to buy it. She had never mentioned wanting to buy this apartment, but she'd been looking at other holiday properties around the area. Neither of them were budging on their offer, so I suggested they co-buy it, which was met with a firm no from both of them. For reasons I won't get into, they were never close unfortunately. After deliberating for some time, I made the decision to offer it to Rose despite the fact Violet had asked for it first for several reasons. 1. Rose is only a 2 hour drive away from the apartment and would certainly get more use out of it. Rose is already visiting it at least once every two to three months, while Violet only visits it about once every one to two years. Violet lives across the country, about a four hour plane ride away. With COVID lockdowns and travel restrictions, it will likely make it difficult for Violet to come for some time. Two, Rose is married with three children that love the beach, while Violet is unmarried with a partner but no kids, and is out of childbearing age if that matters. And three, my eldest granddaughter, Rose's child, was already strongly considering living in it before I announced selling because she plans on attending college and university about 20 minutes away. I believe selling to Rose means the apartment will get far more use and enjoyment out of it than if I sold it to Violet. And Violet will likely be able to still visit it for vacations if Rose permits and isn't using it during that week. However, Violet is extremely upset with me over this, and refuses to talk to both Rose and I. She believes I am disadvantaging her because she chose to focus on her career rather than having a family, and that it's highly unfair because she asked for it first. At the end of the day, it's my apartment, and I believe I have the right to choose who to sell to. Violet has offered to pay more for the apartment in an attempt to sway me. I'm a nearly 80 year old woman racked with health issues. To put it bluntly, I don't have many years left in me and I don't care about the money. So am I the asshole for choosing to sell to Rose even though my other daughter asked for it first? 
I feel conflicted, so I would like some outside opinions. Thanks. And edit, I really appreciate all these comments, sharing their opinions and offering some much needed perspective. I would like to make something clear though. I do not favor Rose for having children under any circumstances. I was nearly like Violet. I didn't get married until I was 37 by choice and didn't have children until I was 38 and 41 because I focused on my career. I thought I would never want to get married or have children. Look, there's a lot of deliberation and if it is true that it's not because of the fact that one has kids and the other doesn't, then I don't know, th those points about one being able to get a lot more use out of the apartment and are a lot closer and you don't care about the money, I, I don't blame you for your choice in this situation then. I'm on your side for this one, OP. I think you've covered the bases fairly well, and at the end of the day, it is your choice who you sell this house to. There wasn't a dibs on this one. There was never a dibs by the sounds of it. As much as that opinion is contested, I stand by a not the asshole judgment. Now in the comments, the provincial lady says, you're the asshole. Violet asked you first, and your response that it would be lovely sounded like you were supportive of her buying it. Your reasons for selling it to Rose are arbitrary and are essentially assumptions on your part. I don't blame Violet for being upset at you. How you handled this situation appears to be favoritism. Yeah, if it was just for the reason of having kids means she'll get more use, I would also say you're the asshole because then what Violet said about punishing her for her career choices is true. However, it is not. One, good point brought up. Violet only said she wanted it first because OP only told her first, so it doesn't count since it's not like Rose initially knew and then refused. Dibs doesn't work on a house when you don't even know it's happening. Also, she apparently didn't promise but just said, that's lovely, that it can stay in the family. Two, travel restrictions aside, Rose being in driving distance and has already been the child using it more than Violet in the past does count, because both location-wise and previous visitation show that Rose is the better choice. 3. Rose's grandchild wants to live there for college. Guys, housing for college can cost up to 14000 a year depending on the area. At the minimum, 7 k We're talking about Rose's family saving anywhere from 32 k to 56 k here. Obviously, it was sold for a price, but since this place will get further use even after she graduates, maybe another grandchild will use it or just summer vacations, but this could go a long way in cost savings for Rose's family, especially since she sold it for cheap. Violet in this scenario just doesn't get nearly that much benefit from this place, nor is she able to visit enough to maintain the upkeep and get good use out of this place as much as her sister. That being said, clarify to Violet, your reasons have nothing to do with her decision for no kids. She needs to know that you were once in the same boat as her. Reinforce point one, and reiterate that it wasn't about how many people in Rose's family there are, or the fact that she has kids that she got it, so much as her proximity and convenience that she could gain from it. I'm gonna go against the grain here with not the asshole but you're the asshole if you don't do this. Actions speak louder than words. It doesn't matter if OP says it's not because Rose had more kids that she got the house, because at the end of the day, it is because she has kids that she got the house. I can say the sky is green until I'm blue in the face, but it doesn't make that the truth. Even if you say it or put it in bold or big font, doesn't make it true. It's not the only reason, but several of the pro-Rose points. It's not done with the intention to punish Violet. Just because the intention wasn't to punish Violet doesn't make it fair. Well, when you have one house to sell and two daughters, it's never going to be fair. If she had given it to Violet rather than Rose, the comments would be equally conflicted. And Meloetta Lover 213 says... Everyone is only focusing on the she doesn't have a family, forgetting the other points. Rose is getting much more use out of the apartment. The fact that she has kids who are also going to use the apartment also helps in that favor. She lives closer and visits more often and keeps the place up more often. The most logical choice is Rose. It's fine that Violet picked to have her career and such and that's wonderful, but that's not the only issue. It would be illogical. It's not playing favourites, it's literally illogical. 
Everyone else here is focused on the wrong things. Not the asshole. and it was funny because I thought you would be the asshole. And just in general, I asked first is not how adult life works. OP is choosing the person who already uses the apartment more and whose current need is greater than the usual due to needing housing for a kid while in college. OP is prioritizing proximity and utility over dibsies. That's entirely reasonable, not the asshole. Our next post is by user Rothabol, titled, Am I the asshole for giving a girl a ride to a party but not home from it? She said that I stranded her. I was going to a friend's afternoon garden party at her house, and my plan was to drive there, stay at the party for a while, and then afterwards meet up for a date at a brewery nearby my friend's house. Then potentially stay over at my date's place, which was close to my friend's house, or get an Uber home, but not drive my car after I'd been drinking. When I was about to go to the party, I mentioned I'd be driving there and bringing a car full of firewood in a group chat. A girl who's a friend of a friend asked me if she could get a ride to the party. She was coming from the same area as me. I said sure, and we went to the party. We didn't really hang out at the party. I was talking to other friends. That night, I left the party, leaving my car parked near my friend's house to go on the date. It went well. I went to her house, which was close by for the night. What I didn't know was that the girl I'd driven to the party was waiting for me to be ready to leave, thinking I was still at the party and would be driving home that night. She thought that because we'd come together, we'd also leave together. She texted me a few times, but I didn't see the texts that night. She was also looking for me and asking other people at the party if they'd seen me, but the people she happened to ask didn't know me well and didn't know that I'd left. She ended up waiting till very late before realizing that while my car was there, I wasn't, and asking if she could sleep over at the host's house. The next morning I saw her texts asking where I was, when I'd be ready to leave, etc. I texted her back to say sorry that I missed her messages, I hadn't been going back that way last night anyway though. She sent me an upset message saying that you don't just give someone a lift 40 minutes from home and then not drive them home, stranding them late at night. I said I didn't realize she was also asking for a lift home. I thought when she asked for a lift there, she literally just meant a lift to get there. If she said there and back, I would have said that I couldn't promise that. I wasn't sure I was going back that way. She said I was being deliberately stupid. It honestly didn't occur to me, like, I feel like it's presumptive to assume. Am I the asshole for driving another girl to a party, but not home? I feel like this is a hard situation. I wouldn't want to be her at that party, but also, I guess Uber is available if you can't find the person that drove you there. You can always get yourself home in that situation. That kind of sucks that it had to come to that, but it's not impossible. You say that she said you were being deliberately stupid. I don't think you were being deliberately stupid. I think that things weren't communicated properly, but that's not particularly your fault or your problem in this circumstance. She's upset you didn't drive her home, but she didn't make it clear that you would be driving her home. So that failure of communication I feel like lies on her, not you. And I'm gonna say not the asshole for this one. Now in the comments, Kyoto Skate Shop says, not the asshole. She had no idea if you were going to be drinking, spending the night there, or catching a ride home. She should have asked if you planned to head back to her home after the party or not. She failed to clearly state her needs. OP wasn't her date either. It'd be the equivalent of calling a taxi, then being pissed because the taxi didn't wait for her. It was stupid of her, not the asshole. I don't get why people are like, you should have asked her. It is super rude to assume someone is going to want to drive extra time to get you home at midnight. That is why you ask. A cultural thing. In my area, she wouldn't be wrong to assume that the ride is both ways. Though, of course, personally, I always ask anyway. That's always the best option. No assholes here. Failure to communicate on both sides. The one mooching the ride should have communicated better. You were not a taxi. You never said you were going home. It is on her, not the asshole. I would say it's a common assumption that if someone is asking another for a ride somewhere, that they're also asking for a ride back, especially since OP never mentioned other plans at all. 
That would have led her to bring up, who's going to give me a ride back? Yeah, I agree with the assumption that if someone was willing to drive you to the party, you would think they'd be okay with driving you back, or else they'd say something. Hard to predict that the person that was driving you there was going to leave his car at the party to go do something else and not come back. OP should have mentioned it before driving her there, and she should have confirmed with him that he'd be okay with driving her back. Our next post is by user OKBodybuilder9874, titled, Am I the asshole for not telling my ex-wife that our daughter is coming home from her first overseas assignment? So our daughter is due back today, 8 10, and I'll be picking her up from the airport with my girlfriend when she comes back, and she's staying with me while on leave. She's fourth generation military, and I'm so proud of my little green ninja, as I call her. I was USAF and proudly wear army stuff supporting her. She did all the work to get in with my support. Her mum wasn't supportive at all and didn't show up for her final swearing in and leaving. I was with her the entire day until she kicked me out to drive two hours home. I wrote her twice a week during boot camp and sent tons of care packages while the ex sent five letters and two care packages. It wasn't until she went overseas that the ex became somewhat supportive. She had a few stickers on the house and car. During her entire time overseas, she sends a few letters and packages, but nowhere close to what I think a parent should. During her tour, I sent weekly letters and care packages at least once a month if she needed anything. I'm having her older and younger brothers over to my place so she can surprise them. Then we'll go see her mum. So how big of an asshole am I? I mean, you sound like a really supportive dad by the looks of it, but at what? why would you need to tell your ex-wife anything? Why? That's up to your daughter to tell the ex-wife. How? In what universe are you an asshole for not telling your ex-wife? I don't think you're supposed to have any communication with her. Like, you can choose to if you want to, but I think it's weird that you think you're an asshole for not telling your ex-wife when the onus is on the ex-wife to keep up with your daughter now that you two are not together. Why do you feel like it's your job and you're intentionally not telling your ex-wife? That's really weird to me. I'm going to say not the asshole, but I don't see why you care. Now in the comments, Knit Sanity says, So it's a contest? Grow up, lol. Your daughter is an adult. She can tell her mum that she's home and make arrangements to see her. No assholes here. Agreed not the arsehole for the not telling her part, but disagree about not the arsehole in general. The whole counting letters and care packages part was unnecessary info, and made OP seem rather toxic, and like he didn't tell her to spite her. He does come across as pretty bitter and douchey, but maybe he has good reason to be. We only have minimal information. There is never a reason or excuse to act like that, and it's really irrelevant to the question. OP is not his ex-wife's messenger, and his daughter can tell the mum if she wants. Even without the backstory, OP is not the asshole here. The backstory seemed like it's attempting to justify like OP maybe felt like it was his responsibility, but didn't out of spite. Private Eyes 2020 says, You are a huge asshole here. How dare you decide what is the appropriate amount of care packages and letters to send? She only sent two care packages during boot camp. Roll eyes here. Why are you keeping count anyway? This is not a parental competition, and you sound exhausting. Is this what your daughter wants? For her mother to be excluded? For the crime of losing out on the care package competition she didn't even know she was in? You're the asshole. Agree with everything said here. Just wanted to add my thoughts on the sticker competition. Are we in kindergarten? My son was in the army, and I never put one sticker on my car. Do you think you're a better parent than me too? You're the asshole, and an even bigger one if you say any of these things in front of your daughter. Yeah, my eyes rolled a little at this. My dad was in, as were two of my siblings and myself. Not a sticker in sight. I also can't imagine getting that many letters and care packages while in basic either. When I went through, mail was handed out by the drill sergeant on duty with the entire platoon present. That's not the kind of spotlight I would want to be in. Our next post is by user PHDon't2021, titled, 
Am I the asshole for assigning my family homework and not visiting until it's done? I mean, that sounds kind of funny, not gonna lie. So I recently quit my PhD program to get a job because I realized academia was not what I wanted and I was better off just using my masters to get a job. Everyone I know from school has experience with grad school and agreed that I'm doing the right thing because I've only done one year of PhD classes, so it's a good time to quit. I've had people tell me they wished they had quit at my level, but they feel trapped now because they're well into their dissertations. My family were not understanding. None of them have ever been to grad school, but they believe that I was very far along and quitting at the last minute. I've told them one year of classes is nothing, but they don't realize how hard the exam and dissertations are and think I could get them done if I spent a little more time in school. I figured if they wouldn't listen to me, they might listen to someone else. I found an article written by a college professor that describes what it's like to get a PhD in my field. I told them I would not visit them until they read the article and wrote a few paragraphs summarizing the article and discussing why someone may choose not to get a PhD. It's not meant to be a long and difficult project. I just want them to understand my point of view. My boyfriend and my siblings did their essays and apologized, and my boyfriend went above and beyond by including other sources besides the article. My parents still haven't done their essays and haven't apologized, and still complain that I'm throwing away all the work I did. Am I the asshole for standing my ground and not visiting until they do their homework? Look, I'm gonna have to go for you're the asshole in this situation because that is such an unreasonable thing to do, but I love that you're making them walk a mile in your shoes before you interact with them. It's like, all right, do the work I've done and then, you know, show me that you've done the work by writing it in paragraphs. So then you've walked a mile in my shoes and you can see why someone would and wouldn't want to get a PhD instead of just having your stupid, unformed opinion that you just want to berate on every day. I definitely don't think they've done too much wrong in this situation, besides being ignorant and then willfully ignorant as well. They don't want to change their opinions. So, you know, it's unreasonable that you've done this. I can see why you've done it, but I would let it go after a while. You're the asshole, but good job. Now in the comments, Katari Sen says, You're the asshole, but I love you for it. Assigning schoolwork to people who want you to continue school is hilarious. Tell them they should just apply themselves more and stick with it. Same here. Even if they read the article to try and gain understanding, it sounds like something my oldest would do to me if I questioned his choices. He's an ass, but I love him for it. As long as he's happy, safe, and can support himself as an adult, I'll be happy for him. I wish OP's parents would do that for him. If they did this and offered a genuine apology and OP wouldn't accept with an accompanying essay, then OP would be being petty. But the assignment itself is hilarious. Definitely a smart-ass move. But honestly, so far it's working well with the younger generation. I think it was justified. Everyone sucks here. They may be naive and are being rude about it, but frankly, you sound insufferable. I wouldn't do an assignment because someone in my family demanded it, and I actually like reading and writing. Was just thinking this. Anyone in my family would just refuse to do it out of spite, even if they did read the article. Like I get wanting them to read the article, but making them write essays is over the top, especially for the ones who learned from the article and apologized. I might feel differently if it was my own significant other guilting me about quitting school, but I can't imagine what my response would be if my significant other wanted me to write an essay about it. It certainly wouldn't be to actually write it. This is funny as hell. Not them being upset about you not finishing school when they don't understand the slightest thing about it, and then them refusing to do their homework. <laughs> Love it, but honestly, I don't blame you. They wanted to bitch about you not finishing? Cool. They can read what you would have to go through first. Edit to add, still and everyone sucks here, but you significantly less than them. It's even funnier now. Am I the asshole for having zero compassion for my deceased mother-in-law's friends? So my mother-in-law passed away in April. She was a nice woman, but we were not friends. That's a whole separate am I the asshole. Her only friends were cats and her Facebook cat friends, with the exception of one lady she met many years ago through her husband, who passed away 20 plus years ago. My husband and I have three children. 
The oldest died in a car accident at the age of 16, six years ago, which was not his fault. Since the passing of our son, his mother began to pawn her grief off on my husband, and they didn't have a relationship for about two years. Sometime about three years ago, my mother-in-law decided to let her only friend and her husband move in with her. They don't have jobs, credits, cars, driver's licenses, or an education. I really have zero compassion for these people. They've basically done nothing in their 60 plus years of life to put them in a better situation than they are. Now that my mother-in-law is gone, my husband and only child owns the house. We need these people gone so we can sell it. We've been paying all the bills and encouraging them over the four months that they need to find a new home. This week, we decided to no longer pay the cable and internet bill of $225 a month. She called, desperately begging us to please turn the TV stations back on because that's all we have, which would require a $250 startup deposit, and we aren't paying this bill anymore. I called her back and told her that her main focus needs to be finding a new home. I take great pleasure in knowing that I've taken their only enjoyment away. They need to find new friends and a new home. Am I the asshole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I suppose I could be considered the asshole because I'm fully aware that I judge these people based upon their lack of education and laziness and unwilling to do what's best for themselves and rely upon others. As is going to be repeated a lot in the comments, you really turned super villain like a d disgusting person when you said, I take great pleasure in knowing that I've taken their only enjoyment away. <laughs> like, seriously, you sick freak. Who says that? Either you're messing with us or you're genuine about it, and both aren't good. At least the first one's a bit <laughs> better because it's probably not a real story in that case, but Jesus. I get that they have to go live their own lives and they have to look after each other, but dear lord, you're having too much fun with this in a sick and twisted way. I have to say everyone sucks here for that. Now in the comments, Lizzie says, Everyone sucks here, I, I think. You were fine until you said, I take great pleasure in knowing that I've taken their only enjoyment away. That seems really petty and icky, honestly. My thoughts exactly. OP still needs to get a lawyer though. These people aren't going to leave voluntarily. OP definitely needs to get a lawyer and start the eviction process. These people are not going to leave voluntarily and not because they're malicious or calculating. They have no life skills and no knowledge of how to find a new place to live. In addition to getting a lawyer, OP should investigate community resources that might help the mother-in-law's friends. Not her job, and she shouldn't have to do that, but if her goal is to get them out of the house, she should do anything she can to help them find somewhere else to live. Honestly, she should just pay them five grand to get the hell out. It'll be cheaper. Yeah, keys for cash is probably the easiest way to get them out. Start by offering them two times the rent for a one-bedroom apartment, first month's rent and security deposit, and negotiate from there. And OP needs to squash her dislike of them and be super nice. Say something like, I'm sorry, we can't turn the cable back on, but we'd like to help you move into a new place. Do you need cash for the first few months rent and security deposit? We could help you out with that. She needs to get them to think that she wants to help them. Isn't that just terrible to read? But oh god, what's the alternative? Webby Vanderquack says, everyone sucks here. They need to move out, but there's a happy medium between paying their bills and having no compassion for them whatsoever and taking great pleasure in knowing that you have taken their only enjoyment away. <laughs> it's disturbing. You do have to evict these people. You do not have to become an asshole who gets pleasure from making others miserable. Everyone sucks here, and exactly. Serve them with an eviction notice. Give them the legally required 30 days and be done with it. At a minimum, they can get in touch with social services in that time. These are elderly people who do not have the means or know-how to support themselves. It is not OP's responsibility, but her taking glee in making their lives hellish to drive them out of the house makes them a giant asshole as well. And not the asshole. Even if you are okay with them staying, there's no way you owe them free internet and cable as a part of their rent-free residency.
start formal eviction proceedings, get someone who knows what they're doing so it's all done properly. They're basically squatters in my opinion, but I am no expert. Our next post is by user Roadblock3554, titled, Am I the asshole for making my brother leave after he brought his kids to my child-free wedding? My wife and I got married days ago. We decided the wedding would be child-free. We thought this was the best option considering several factors from budget to keeping the order, etc. Everyone got an invitation, but my biggest concern was how my brother Ramsey, 36, was going to react. Ramsey married young and has four kids that he takes everywhere he and his wife go. They're always there at every family event. The kids are grade A. Hyperactive, to say the least. I gave Ramsey the invitation in person and he read it out loud in a sarcastic tone then said, Child free, huh? I nodded and he got somewhat mad and said, Are you serious? But my children have never been excluded from any event, big or small, let alone their own uncle's wedding. I said, I'm sorry, but it's already been decided and everyone had to follow the rules, not just him. He stared off for a minute, then to my surprise he said, I totally get it, man. No children means no children. No worries. I was glad he didn't start an argument over it and seemed to accept the rule. The day of the wedding came and Ramsey and his wife didn't show up until shortly before the ceremony began. My best man notified me that Ramsey had arrived and had all his kids with him. I was legit mad. I went to meet him at the entrance and saw that he brought all his kids against me and my wife's wishes. I greeted the kids and asked my sister-in-law to take them back to the car. He loudly asked what the hell was wrong with me. I asked why he brought his kids and who said that it was okay. He said no one, but he was planning on bringing the kids all along and figured that by initially agreeing to my rule, then showing up with the kids anyway, would get me to agree on letting them stay. I stated that this was no event for kids for many reasons and that everyone respected the rule except him. He complained about me disrespecting him and his kids since, again, he never attends any event without them. In his words, wherever I go, my kids follow, period. I told him he needed to leave then. Not only did he call me a lunatic, but a terrible brother and terrible uncle. He also called me a simp for agreeing to my wife's stupid rule, saying that if it was him and his wife even hinted he couldn't have the family's kids at their wedding, he would have dropped her right there and then. It was humiliating and loud enough for the guests to notice. My in-laws did too. I told him to leave and that's when my mum and aunt arrived to try to convince me to let it go and let them stay. But I refused and had him leave after a massive argument between us. To say that I felt absolutely crappy is an understatement. Everyone's given me grief ever since that incident and deciding with Ramsey, saying I wronged him and acted cold towards him and his kids when they showed up to celebrate me and my wife. My dad is especially pissed at me for potentially permanently effing up my relationship with Ramsey and his wife and kids by kicking them out of my wedding. He quoted that Ramsey won't ever forget this day. Am I the asshole? All I gotta say after this one is screw Ramsey. Ramsey got what he deserved. Ramsey shouldn't have done this. Why is everyone trying to appease Ramsey in this situation? I can see that it's Possible, it is quite possible that Ramsey may just be the favourite kid out of these two parents. Because after all these shenanigans, it's obvious that Ramsey can do no wrong. Ramsey broke the kid free rule and then got pissed off, and it's now OP's fault that this is all happening, and you're a simp, and leave your wife because I'd leave my wife if she tried to do this, even though she never would because she's probably too scared to ever try something like this. And all of that is to say that Ramsey sucks. Screw Ramsey. Not the arsehole OP, I agree with all of your actions. Now in the comments, KS Nitter says, Really? His kids go wherever he goes. His sex life must be very interesting. Not the arsehole. As a parent, I hate people like the brother so much. It makes the rest of us parents look like idiots. I didn't even read it and I'll say not the arsehole. Child free is child free for frick's sake. Get a babysitter. 
Damn, quit pushing your kids down people's throats. As a mum, I agree 100%. No kidding. I mean, the bride and groom get to make the call about their wedding. Don't like it? Don't go. If it seems unreasonable to you, don't go. If you care about the people, send a nice gift anyway. It makes me insane when parents try and drag their kids to things when they're clearly not invited. And I'm a parent who takes their grade school aged kids to fancy ass restaurants on a regular basis because we've taught said kiddo how to behave and they do great. And if they don't, we leave. It's only happened once so far and kiddo was getting sick and we didn't realize it. Mild tantrum and out we went. Kiddo had a fever by the time we got home and was sick for a week. Sad capybara in sand says, You won't forget that day ever. It was the day your brother decided his wants were more important than your specific requests on your wedding day. Your brother explicitly told you his plan was to blatantly ignore your request to try and force you to just accept it. Not the asshole, and tell your parents that if they keep supporting someone who deliberately tried to ruin your wedding, then they will have permanently screwed up their relationship with you. Not to mention, insulted OP and his wife. Did the family miss this? They seem to be the type to sweep things under the rug in the name of peace, and that's really worrying. Relying on everyone else to grin and bear it? It's probably your brother's MO. He knows he can get his way if he is loud and obnoxious enough. How was he expecting a reception without any chairs or food for four children to go? Were he and his wife going to have them on their laps and share two plates between six? Like, apart from the asshole move of lying and trying to steamroller over someone else's wedding, how was this going to work practically? Oh, but surely some guests would have given their seats and their food to my precious babies. And not the asshole. Your wedding, your choice. Your brother tried to strong arm you into letting his kids attend by lying about respecting your wishes and then showing up with his kids, figuring that he would call your bluff and get his way. You did the right thing by standing your ground and insisting that he leave. If he truly felt disrespected by your child-free wedding, then he should have chosen not to attend, but he chose to make a scene instead. You've done nothing wrong here, and your family telling you that you should have given in to your brother's boundary stomping are also the asshole here. Our next post is by user that concert 2710 titled, Am I the asshole for shutting my wife out of the blender buying process? Hi everybody, I was hoping for some input from this community that I've seen on r slash all a few times. I'm a 39 year old man and my wife is a 33 year old woman. She stays at home and takes care of the house, no children yet, while I work. We're going on 7 years of marriage. Last week, I received a large performance bonus and I decided I would like to buy myself a nice blender with a small portion of the money. I know it's not the most exciting present to buy yourself, but I cook with a lot of purees and have a shake every morning. I've had two blenders die on me in the past three years and was determined to make my life easier. Seeing as it was a financial decision, I told my wife as much, and she told me to show her before I ordered it. I researched a bunch of different models, shopped around, checked out safety ratings, and found one I wanted for just under $600. I called my wife to my computer, where I showed her the model I wanted, and was mainly just confirming that she was fine with it too. She immediately responded by pointing at the suggested items on the website, which showed a significantly cheaper model. She asked what I thought of that one, and I said that it wasn't what I was looking for. Then she said I should get a nice hand mixer to save some money. I kind of chuckled and said that I didn't really want one of those. She responded with, well then, how about this blender? It's $500 cheaper than the one you chose. I reiterated that I was really looking for a good one that I could use for over a decade, but she was completely undeterred. She essentially took over my computer and then began the race to the bottom of finding the cheapest possible blender, as I stood by repeating the same point about being in the market for a quality product. At one point, she was on Alibaba showing me an $11 product that would probably take a month to ship. I was at my limit at this point, so I finally just said I'd think about it. 
She left the room to start making dinner, and I ordered the $600 one that I wanted. I figured when the blender got to our house that I'd explain. Two days later, it arrived. She asked me how much it had cost, she didn't even recognize it, and I said that it was the one that I'd shown her. She immediately began sulking and said that I didn't care about her opinion, to which I responded, I told her I'd think about it. Then she asked when I had ordered it, and I responded about three minutes after she left the room. I thought about it in those minutes and made the decision that I had put half a dozen hours of research into. She is furious with me now, and keeps repeating that I has, which I'm going to translate as she has, no financial power in the house. I think she's being completely dramatic, but she thinks I was way out of line. Any inputs on who's right on this would be great. Um, in all honesty, personally, I kind of side with her more in this instance, but I still think that she was trying to go for the cheapest option possible and not thinking about this one properly. This is an investment. If we want a mixer that's going to last a decade or more, we're not buying an $11 mixer off of Alibaba. That's just stupidity. Communication seems to be lacking between you two in a desperate way. Fix that, please. I think just both of you suck in this one. You for obvious reasons. You shouldn't have ordered it as straight away, but you did anyway. You're the asshole for that, and I think everyone sucks here in this situation. Now in the comments, Dusklight says, Everyone sucks here. Hope you realize this fight is much bigger than just about the blender. As she says, she's a housewife and she feels like she doesn't have any power in the relationship. I suggest you find a good marriage counsellor and do not have kids until you figure out if you can resolve this. I agree with everyone sucks here because first, it's a freaking blender. Second, for the points you made. And third, it's a blender. I will say, if it is a Vitamix or a blend tech, really the only two blenders in that range? It isn't just a blender, especially if he uses it as much as he suggests he does. The price range sounds like a Vitamix. It's expensive AF, but if I had a lot of money, I would totally want one too. I have a blend tech that we got as a wedding gift, not even on the registry, that retailed for $750. That thing could power my lawnmower. It is incredible. MM172 says, everyone sucks here. Regardless of whether 600 bucks is too much to spend on a blender, you shouldn't have told her you'd think about it when you'd already thought about it and decided that you were doing this. Nor should she have gotten stuck on cost as the only factor. But maybe if you had acknowledged her concerns on that while still emphasizing the features you considered absolutely necessary, you could have found a reasonable compromise somewhere in the middle, and neither of you would be here right now. As it is, you both need to have a conversation about your joint savings goals and whether individual windfalls should be treated as individual or household funds and how you address conflicts over how much is too much to spend on a personal item and anything else the incident has exposed and isn't working about your approach to finances or communication right now. Agree, except it doesn't seem that OP is considering his individual windfall to be individual funds. Quote, I decided I would like to buy myself a nice blender with a small portion of the money. I took from this that the rest of the money remains available for other household needs. And of course, the wife is welcome to use the fancy blender too. So it isn't like OP is snatching up all of the bonus money and refusing to share. The rest of the conversation is absolutely necessary though. I agree with your assessment. My bonuses are usually pretty generous, and with each one, I buy something for myself with a percentage of the money. The rest goes into savings, home improvements, or family vacations depending on what's going on. I've always done that, and I think it's okay. After all, it's my hard work that earned that bonus. Yes, yes, yes. OP deserves to buy himself a gift with his bonus, and the gift he wants for himself doesn't need his wife's approval. For the record, I'm also a housewife slash stay-at-home mom, and whenever my husband gets a bonus, I encourage him to buy something for himself, and then the rest is for savings, projects, and fun. He works his ass off. He deserves a toy that is solely a want from time to time, and he doesn't need me to sign off for something he wants to buy himself. If he wants to show me and ask my opinion, I'll give it to him, but I don't expect him to make the choice based on my input. 
downvote me to oblivion, as the hive mind will, but OP is not the asshole. Our next post is by user individual nothing 24 titled, Am I the asshole for refusing to remove a scary welcome mat from outside my door? I live in an apartment complex. I was never really familiar with any of my neighbours, as I've pretty much kept to myself. A friend of mine, as a joke, got me a welcome mat with Pennywise the Clown from the movie It. It's kind of a 3D mat that shows you falling into a hole with Pennywise waiting at the bottom. I should specify that this friend recently passed away, so this mat is somewhat sentimental to me. I got a knock at my door, and it was a woman who lives in the same building as me. She asked me to change my welcome mat because it scared her kids. I told her it was given to me by a friend who passed away recently, and it has sentimental value to me, and I closed the door. She complained to the leasing office, and the manager called me. I told him the situation, and asked him what lease clause am I violating. He was tongue-tied. I said, tell me which clause I'm violating, and I'll remove it, and then hung up. Am I the asshole? Now in the comments, DangerousBean74 says, you're the asshole. This sub isn't, am I technically violating my lease agreement? It's, am I the asshole? Deliberately and unnecessarily frightening anyone more vulnerable than you is always an asshole move. No one's telling you to throw out the welcome mat. Just move it inside your doorway instead of outside in the shared hallway. There is literally no reason why it has to be in the common space instead of inside your home. I'm a grown adult, and I would get chills if I had to walk by and look at that every day. If it's that important to OP, they should keep it inside their doorway or consider displaying it inside somewhere. As you say, they can be in the right and also still be the asshole. You're the asshole, OP. I'm surprised she hasn't moved it inside for fear of someone just taking and tossing it. If it's so sentimental, does she really want to just leave it outside for anyone to take? It's not like it's a $5 welcome mat that she doesn't care about. This, for real. Regardless of the judgement, I hope OP takes it inside just so it doesn't disappear or get damaged. Oh my god, and someone found the mat that it looks like. That is terrifying. What the hell? Oh my I, I wouldn't want to look at that. Jumpy Rope says, put it inside the door instead? We're going to get Am I the Asshole for stealing my neighbor's welcome mat pretty soon here if he doesn't. That's what I was thinking. Just move it inside or on the balcony or something. You're the asshole. Frame it and hang it in your apartment. You will not get another gift from your friend who has passed. This is the right answer. It protects it and at the same time honors the friend. Bonus, you're not a douche to your neighbors. It's a win-win. Am I the asshole for breaking my promise to my stepkids and abandoning and traumatizing them because I did not want to parent them anymore? So I met Will when I was 22. Will was 29 with two kids and had newly been widowed. We had a whirlwind courtship where he introduced me to the kids and got me involved in their lives very early, like the first few days after I met him. Will said really quickly that he was sure I was the one, not only for himself, but also for his kids, that we'd have an incredible, happy family life. We got married when I was 23, Will was 30, and his kids were 8 and 6. Our wedding ceremony also included me and the kids making promises to each other, which was Will's idea. Soon, Will shoved all the childcare onto me. I wasn't a stay-at-home spouse, I worked full-time and always have, but he always had reasons for me to do the childcare. Him being sore from doing a physical job, me being better at it since I babysat kids this age in the past and he never had, or just girl stuff for his daughter, or cooking or anything. He always had some reason and it ended up always on me. He started playing video games and relaxing from getting home until bed because he was tired and he was bringing in the money and keeping the roof over everyone's heads, though that wasn't really true. He said he deserved to relax. Then he went out with his friends or brought them back to drink beer and watch loud TV. He developed a major attitude with me and encouraged the same in my kids. They found it funny. 
He started openly disrespecting me and encouraged them to also. He was the ultimate fun dad, and I got put in the role of the mean witch. Sometimes they all ganged up on me and mocked me, but also all expected me to serve them and constantly be jumping up to care for them. By the end of the first year, I realized the marriage was a big mistake, but felt guilty leaving because of my promises to the kids. Another year went by and I realized that no matter how hard I tried, and how I knew there were only kids and I didn't really blame them, I genuinely hated both of the kids. And I could not lie to myself anymore and pretend that I loved them. I did not, and I never would. One day, I just walked out packed up everything of mine and moved out while nobody was at home. I left a note explaining that it wasn't working and saying goodbye. That was the end of it. Cue the crap storm from my ex and a bitter divorce, but we both walked away with what we went into the marriage with, which was not much for either of us. I had never legally adopted the kids, so I had no rights or responsibilities about them, and I never reached out to any of them again. Honestly, I was overjoyed to be rid of them all. Fifteen years have gone by, and that seems like a lifetime ago, or another person's life, but I'm still in my thirties. I was recently shocked to get a message from Tamara, Will's daughter, now twenty-five. Tamara said I betrayed and traumatized her for life for abandoning them after my promises to them. She said I had a responsibility to never leave no matter what. I know she remembers the horrible way she treated me though. It just feels like that marriage was based on a lie. You didn't really know these kids at that time. You were forced to make this promise to them at the wedding. It all seems like some grand fantasy that the husband was trying to, you know, achieve. And he did achieve that. He locked you down as bang maid and then gave all responsibility to you, then locked you into that contract, quote unquote, at the the wedding where you had to promise all of this to them. Unfortunately, Tamara is 25 years old, has a fully developed brain and should understand her actions and her father's actions at the time. Tamara has absolutely no excuse for coming to you and saying that you you had this responsibility and that you abandoned them. I feel like that's a cop-out. I feel like that's massively disrespectful from Tamara, where she knows what happened in all those years. She knows what her dad's like, and she still chooses to attack you. I would ignore her. I wouldn't even respond. I'd block her, go no contact, and move on with my life. So, I don't think you're the asshole for this, OP. I think she and her father suck for doing this to you. Not the asshole. Now in the comments, Holdfast02 says, Not the asshole. There is never a responsibility to never leave. That is ridiculous. Sure, a 10-year-old may reasonably think so, but a 25-year-old should know better. Agreed. I was bitter when my mother left and divorced my stepdad when I was 10. As an adult, I realized that he was a guy who refused to get a job and just sat around the house all day. But he would leave for work in the morning as I was getting ready for school to keep up appearances. You've had a rational realization about what happened. I don't think that this will happen here. If a 25-year-old is still traumatized from someone she barely knew 15 years ago, then there's nothing OP could say or do that'd change that. She probably has a skewed perspective from the remaining dad on OP. Much easier to blame others than take responsibility yourself. So any problems that arise after the divorce, there was always a scapegoat to have the children blame. Resentment just builds up on false pretenses for 15 years, and then you have a situation like a 25-year-old blaming OP without any self-reflection on the matter. Cups of Cursed Tea says, Not the asshole. Your husband didn't want a wife. He chose a younger woman and whisked her off her feet to be his live-in maid, nanny, and cook. He knew what he was doing when he asked you to make that promise to the kids, emotionally manipulating you into staying, even though he treated you like crap. It's sad that the children lost their mother, but their father encouraging them to treat you like the evil stepmom was cruel to both you and them. Clearly, the behavior he showed continued after you left, and he kept telling Tamara and her brother how awful you were. You got yourself out of there. Well done for being strong and wise enough to do so. Many people don't have the strength to do that. And you need to stay out of there, OP. Not your circus, not your monkeys. 
You made a promise, but a promise is made with agreements and conditions, usually from both parties. You didn't hold up your end because they were relentless with their bullying. Not the asshole. Only thing to add to this is very well done for leaving the situation. My thoughts are coloured by the fact a friend was murdered by a controlling husband at the weekend, but you left before the control turned violent and worse. Our next post is by user Euphoric Inevitable 28, titled Am I the asshole for reminding my sister she was deemed not fit to adopt when she tried to adopt one of my twins? So me and my sister Mia both suffer from fertility issues. I made peace with it long ago, but Mia always wanted kids, so she and her husband kept trying. From IVF to adoption, all of them resulted in a dead end. I recently found out that I was two months pregnant with twins. My partner Kyle and I were surprised but happy. I called up my sister and told her the news and said I was going to announce it to the family at a gathering at my house. I expected her to be angry, as she has been with other family members for getting pregnant, and told her it was okay if she couldn't come and felt it would be too much for her. Surprisingly, she said she was okay and therapy had helped and agreed to come. So three days ago, I hosted a family gathering at our place and announced it via watching pictures on a projection screen, the last photo being my ultrasound. Immediately, all family members looked at me and they understood. All of them congratulated me and Kyle, including Mia and her husband. Mia kept really close to me throughout the gathering and asked to see the ultrasound multiple times, which me and Kyle brushed off to her being happy for me. That night, Mia called me and said she had something important to say. She wanted to adopt one of the twins. I was appalled. I said I am not giving up my twins for adoption. She kept trying to encourage me to give in and said it would be the right thing to do since we were twins as well. I was getting pissed off and told her I couldn't even if I wanted to since all the adoption agencies had rejected her application and deemed her unfit to raise a child. She started crying, called me a beer, and said I didn't deserve to be a mother and wished the children not to be born to a mother like me. I hung up at that. Since then, my mother and some paternal aunts who also suffer from the same fertility issues have been texting and messaging me, calling me inconsiderate and selfish. Kyle, my dad, and maternal family are with me on this. My mother says we didn't plan the baby and it wouldn't hurt to give away one of the twins, especially when she would still be in the family. I have seen Mia break down during other relatives' pregnancy announcements and be hysterical. I genuinely thought she was okay with my pregnancy after being in therapy, but apparently not. Still, I did say those things to her knowing that it would hurt her. Some maternal aunts said that it was probably a mood swing, but I don't know. Am I the asshole? Again, I'm perplexed that people exist in this universe that would think what this sister is trying to do is a sane and rational thing and then agree with her and then attack OP for not agreeing with their irrational, insane thoughts. I really want to know where these crazy people live in the world because what is going on? If I was in OP's shoes, I'd do everything to get these people away from me, trying to take and separate twins. That's just a really bad idea. You don't just separate twins like that. So yeah, I'm 100% on OP's side for this one. Everyone else is just crazy to me, and I'm not even going to try and think about where they're coming from. Not the asshole. Now in the comments, Lyra says... Not the asshole, and you need to move, somewhere that she doesn't have the address. It very, very likely will not stop here. It will escalate and it will get horrible. I'm so sorry that you're dealing with that insanity. Jesus Christ, I would be putting immediate distance, as much as possible, between us after that. Edit to add, what the hell is with all the comments saying that everyone sucks here because of what she said? She wasn't expressing her opinion. She was reiterating a fact that had just become suddenly relevant as her sister was actively proving the point in front of her. She was acting wildly unfit to be around children, and OP said so. Not surprising at all since her twin was not giving up on asking for her baby. Also, ask Mia to raise this request with her therapist. 
Let's see what sort of a reality check she gets there. If she actually has a therapist. Roy Leoki says, Not the asshole. What an utterly ridiculous request. Who on earth would willingly hand their baby over to a relative upon request? You were simply giving Mia a dose of reality. I think what's worse is their mother apparently agrees with Mia. Oh, they weren't planned. Just give one up. You won't notice the difference. I honestly don't know what I would do if my mother uttered something so horrible. Reading it gave me violent thoughts. I'm so glad I was not the only person to feel this way. Literally talking about these babies like they're toys. Oh, you have two. You can share one with your sister. Unbelievable. And not the asshole. I'm so sorry you're going through this, but Mia's fertility issues are not your issues, and she has absolutely no right to ask you to give up one of your children. I would strongly recommend you go low or no contact with your family for the duration of your pregnancy, both for your safety and your sister's mental health. And our next post is by user Can't Dance and Still Do It, titled Am I the asshole for telling my friend that her getting treated like a doormat is her choice and that I won't do the same? My 27 female partner, S, 32 male, and I have been together for around three years. Our relationship has always been a little odd from the outside. S works 80 plus hours per week as a lawyer at a large firm. I work as a policy analyst for the government at a nice 37 and a half hour per week in comparison. Before we dated, he told me that he wants to work up to being a partner and that would require long hours. I told him that I prioritize work-life balance, even if it means a lower salary. We agreed to date knowing this about each other. My best friend V, 27 female, and her boyfriend started dating our first year of uni and have a rocky relationship. The boyfriend cheated on V in our last year of uni, and he's since been caught cheating again twice. V, against my advice, has chosen to stay with him. S recently got a promotion, and as part of the deal, was assigned an assistant. When I met her, I kind of got a vibe that she was crushing on S. She was really flirty and very attentive to S, which he pointed out to me first. He said that he'd still keep her on as assistant, but that he would make sure nothing got out of hand. I wasn't concerned because I never had a reason to worry that he would cheat on me. One night, V and I got dinner, and later decided to go back to my place. S's office is in between the restaurant we were at and my apartment building, so I offered to go drop off some food for him. I asked V if it was okay if we stopped, and she agreed. When we got to his first floor, he was working in a glass-panelled room, alone with his assistant. I didn't think much of it, dropped off the food, and left. I also want to add that there were lots of other people in the office. As soon as we left, V asked if that was the assistant that I thought had a crush on S. I said yes, that they often work late together. V got angry at me saying that I was treating this like a joke and that if I want to keep my man, I have to stake my claim or something like that. I explained to her that I wasn't worried that he would cheat and that I trusted him. V told me that she was certain that he was cheating and that I should force him to ask for a different assistant. I was getting kind of annoyed, but it got worse when V said, amongst other things, that S knows he can cheat on me, and I'd let him because he makes more money than me, so he doesn't need to respect me because he pays more. S's salary is around three times mine, although I have an okay salary myself at around 85k, and I don't need him for money. We split bills percent-wise, so I pay less than he does, but it's equitable and we agreed on it. I told V that just because she's okay being treated like a doormat doesn't mean that I am, and that if he cheated on me, I would leave him. Respect is essential in a relationship. I also said that she had no place offering relationship advice considering her boyfriend is a serial cheater, and they fought all the time, and that if she wanted to keep complaining to me, I should start charging her. It was mean, and I feel really bad about it now. She hasn't talked to me since. So am I the asshole? No, OP. That is the truth. That is not even a harsh truth. That is the harsh reality of her situation and of your situation. 
If you hadn't said that, I think people here would be saying that you let her off easy. I mean, that's what you had to say to her to get her to realize she's being ridiculous in this situation. If she refuses to take your advice and continued to refuse to take it in the past, why should you listen to her now? It's obvious that in this same situation, the best thing you could do is ignore her advice because that would be treating her as she has treated you. I don't like anything she's said to you here that is ridiculously disrespectful to you and your relationship. I'm going to say not the asshole, as I agree completely with you and what you've said. Now in the comments, worry about you ho says, not the asshole. She's projecting, and she insisted on being rude while refusing to drop it when you disagreed politely the first time. Exactly this. V can't trust her partner because he's cheated on her many times, and therefore doesn't understand that other people can have trusting relationships. But if trust in a relationship is possible, then not only was V wrong to take her partner back, every decision made involving him since then has been wrong, and every second spent with him was a waste of time. Definitely best to assume all men cheat when not changed to a radiator, easier than second-guessing one's entire life. Yeah, I'd bet this is the root cause of the pain that's causing her to lash out. I feel bad for her, as she clearly has no idea what a trusting relationship looks like. Not bad enough to say OP was in the wrong though. Not the asshole. Congratulations for being in a mature relationship where you aren't paranoid about your significant other banging everything in sight. That's a great place to be, and you weren't wrong to tell her to cut the analysis. She stepped way over the line. That being said, might not hurt to reach out and try to soften what you said. Unfortunately, sometimes the truth hurts, and you put it on her pretty good. I wouldn't. That girl needs to hear the truth loud and clear. Not the asshole. I don't think OP said anything wrong in the moment, but it's possible to communicate the truth while also being tactful. If the friendship is important to her, I don't think there's anything wrong with reaching out now, after the fact, and saying, Hi V, I'm sorry that I let my anger get the best of me in the way I expressed what I said. While I do obviously worry about your relationship with your boyfriend due to his past behavior, and the fact that you don't seem happy with him to me, it's only because I care about you, and I don't want to see you get hurt. But I recognize that it's completely your choice how you want to handle your relationship. In the same way, I hope you can understand that I trust and respect S and feel confident that he feels the same way towards me and that he would never break that trust, regardless of who he works with or what our financial situation is. In the same way that I respect your decisions regarding your relationship, I hope you can respect mine and we can put this behind us because I miss talking to you. You are not taking back anything you said but framing it as an act of love and respect rather than one of judgment, which can only help. Our next post is by user Negotiation Brief 9580 titled, Am I the asshole for digging my heels in with my fiancé concerning a surname? My fiancé, 27 female, and I, 30 male, are getting married next year. I pretty much let her run the show when it comes to the wedding and reception. Her last name is from her biological father who left when she was two. Her mother remarried and she's said for years that she can't wait to get married to change it. For six years, I've heard about what a piece of garbage this guy is. I am the last male to carry my name. There are only four people with the name, so it's always been important to me to pass it on to my children. She wants to get married in a Catholic church. I'm not Catholic, but it means a lot to her, so I'm in the process of converting. She wanted to be close to her mom and sister, so I left a job that I loved, found a new job, and we moved four hours away from my family to be closer to them. Her sister is a recovering alcoholic, so we don't keep liquor in our apartment despite the fact that I love to have a beer after work. I have made many changes to accommodate her. She's acknowledged it, and I always respond that all I care about is passing my name on, and she responds with a number of days until our wedding. Shortly after we arrived, Bio Dad contacted her out of the blue. He heard from relatives that she was getting married, and decided that it was the perfect time to reconnect. All of the sudden, I now hear what a wonderful guy Paul is, how hard he's trying, and how wonderful it is that he is back. 
Often, I get home from work and she's gone, only to arrive home past midnight after being out with Paul and her half-siblings. I hate that I don't see her as much, but I know how much it means to her to have a relationship with him. At the same time, after years of hearing her trash him, I'm not even allowed to think bad thoughts about him. She's planning on having him walk her down the aisle, which I don't think is appropriate, but it's her decision. This weekend was the bombshell. She told me that her father brought up the importance of their name, that she's decided to keep it. This stung very badly. I replied that it was her choice, I just wanted to pass my name down. She smiled uncomfortably and informed me that she wanted the first boy to carry her name because it would mean so much to daddy. I told her that is not happening. She suggested that we hyphenate as a compromise. I told her that there was no negotiation, that I had one thing that was important to me. I'd moved heaven and earth to give her what she needed in everything else, but I wouldn't budge an inch on this. She told me I was being unreasonable. I responded that I have been in her life longer than he has and asked her who it was that she was trying to start a life with, me or him. She started crying and accused me of being jealous of her relationship with her father. My parents and her mom and stepdad agree with me and think that she's allowing Paul to influence her. Her sister thinks that I was an ass for asking that question and refusing to compromise. And I'm with you 100% on this one, I don't agree with the sister calling you an ass for asking that question and refusing to compromise. Oh, I'm sorry, we've had this agreement in place the whole time. He did move heaven and earth for her. He has accommodated her so much. How disrespectful of the sister to say that he was an ass for standing his ground and refusing to compromise. She knows what Paul has done. She knows that Paul is being manipulative in this situation as the parents and stepdad agree. Both the sister and the wife in this situation are being irrational. I completely disagree with them on everything that they've done here. I would be as deeply offended and, I guess, really hurt if I was OP in this situation. It really isn't fair what is happening to them, and I want him to continue to stick up for himself. So I'm going not the asshole. Now in the comments, Spaghetti Hips Don't Lie says, Not the asshole. I'm not going to read other comments. Staying out till midnight with your mostly estranged father after years of hating him is also effing weird. I'm not jumping to weird incest conclusions, but I do believe that OP's wife should talk to a therapist about the impact of her father coming back into her life. There is definitely something going on in terms of her being eager to please him due to finally getting attention after childhood abandonment. Or he could be parentally love-bombing her. I'm saying this because she seems to now be obsessing about his role in her life, which is not healthy. Current surname issue aside. Honestly, I think jumping to incest is kind of weird here. When I read this story... I agree with you that she's so stung from being abandoned as a kid that she's bending over backwards to gain approval and hopefully keep dad from leaving this time. I hate calling her an asshole because I'm not even remotely close to understanding what it's like to grow up with a parent that just decided to up and leave and go no contact. So I would just suggest some sort of therapy for her like you suggested. Lilive 77 says, You're not the asshole but unfortunately you also can't force her to change her name. Use this as a time to evaluate your relationship. Perhaps couples counselling would be a good idea before saying your I do's. Good luck. And OP says, Clarification, while I would love if she took it, and it hurt to know that she's decided not to after six years of saying that she wanted to change her name, I never tried to force it. I accepted it as her decision. I only put my foot down when it came to our future children. Then you deserve better. She changed the game at the last minute. Yeah, and what compromises has she ever made for you? Because this sounds like all take and no give from her end. Are you sure this is someone you want to get married to? I would definitely consider couples counselling on this. Edit. Found OP's comment below where he says that she hasn't had to compromise on anything because most of the time you guys are in agreement with each other. So OP is the only one giving in. So yeah, that's by One Lonely Pineapple says info. What kind of compromise has she made for you? What kind of changes has she made for you? And OP replies, honestly, she hasn't had to make any. Believe it or not, on 90% of things, we are in complete agreement. 
The things I've compromised on are things that I was willing to do to make her life easier. She wanted to live closer to her family. My parents are retiring within 10 years and likely leaving that area, so they didn't make a lot of sense other than I really liked my job and the people I worked with. I don't hate my current job, but it's not the same. I love the girl. The girl wants to live here. I go with the girl. I felt like taking my name was equivalent because it's a big change. She knew that it was important to me, so as of now, she's made no compromises or changes. But this is an issue because you have no balance at all. You are making her life easier, and she's not considered anything to make your life easier. There's no way you should be on the marriage track if you're this out of balance. And if your parents are going to be moving away in 10 years, it actually made perfect sense to stay where you were. Spend time with your family and enjoy your awesome job. Then when your parents retire and leave the area, move to near her family so she can enjoy the same family closeness. That would have been the reasonable compromise in my opinion. And you're also converting to Catholicism, which is a lot. Are you sure this is necessary too? The Catholic Church allows non-Catholics to be married to a Catholic in church, provided that they are members of one of the three monotheistic religions and have gone through the rites in their own religion and denomination. I married a non-Catholic in a Catholic church, and so did several of my friends, including one who married a Jewish man in the Catholic church. Not the asshole. Honestly, she doesn't have to take your name, but that is a 180 degree turn that needs to be examined for sure. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below, and make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages, and thank you so much for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.